Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in around five minutes. Today, we kick off with a story that is something we've been following, but which so far has been largely based exclusively on rumor. Well, now we have that other type of rumor, which is called reportage. And yes, what we're talking about is Meta's plans to develop a GPT-4 level competitor that they release in their open source-ish way. Now, you've probably heard me reference this tweet from Jason at AGI Koala from August 25th a couple of times now. Jason tweets, Overheard at a Meta Gen AI social, we have the compute to train Llama 3 and 4. The plan is for Llama 3 to be as good as GPT-4. Jason asks, wow, if Llama 3 is as good as GPT-4, will you guys still open source it? Yeah, we will. Sorry, alignment people. As I said, over the weekend, the Wall Street Journal added their journalistic credibility to this conversation. The piece was titled, Meta is developing a new, more powerful AI system as technology race escalates. So what information did we get here? Basically just confirmation of what was in that tweet. According to people familiar with the matter, Meta aims for Llama 3 to be several times more powerful than Llama 2, and the focus is on getting it to be at least as good as GPT-4. Now, a couple other interesting details. One is around timing. WSJ writes, Meta expects to start training the new AI system in early 2024, and also how they're doing it. Remember, Llama 2 was announced at a Microsoft event, but it appears like Meta is trying to move farther away and more independent from that big company. The WSJ writes, Meta is currently building up the data centers necessary for the job and acquiring more H100s. While Meta joined with Microsoft to make Llama 2 available on Microsoft's cloud computing platform Azure, it plans to train the new model on its own infrastructure. Now, in terms of how it would be released, the article says, Zuckerberg is pushing for the new model, like Meta's earlier AI offerings, to be open sourced and therefore available free for companies to build AI powered tools. Now, while that is Zuckerberg's intention, apparently Meta's lawyers are a little bit stressed out about it. They apparently fear potential legal ramifications, including lawsuits around copyright and other legal issues that may arise if meta-created tools are used to spread disinformation or for other bad purposes. Now, because this is something that most people in the space have been talking about for a few weeks now, there wasn't really much chatter on Twitter slash X about it. But I do think that by and large, what's shaping up is a pretty significant set of releases coming later this fall and early next year. We have, of course, Google Gemini and then potentially Llama 3 all of which have OpenAI's dominance firmly in their sights. The question, as we asked on shows over this weekend, is whether OpenAI is going to continue to pause at this GPT-4 level, or whether the temptation and the economic pressure to advance to GPT-4.5 or even GPT-5 will be too great. Now, at the current GPT levels, one of the things that some have contented themselves with is that although these machines are good at doing specific tasks, they don't seem to have the capability for novel or inventive or creative thought. Well, not so fast as a group of Wharton professors who tested MBA students against ChatGPT to see who could come up with the most innovative business ideas. The professors who teach innovation and entrepreneurship gave both GPT-4 as well as their MBA students the same prompt. Generate an idea for a new product or service appealing to college students that could be made available for $50 or less. From the human students, they randomly selected 200 ideas. And from GPT-4, they generated first 100 ideas just with that prompt, and then another 100 ideas after providing a handful of successful examples, i.e. a version of training. They measured the results in three ways. First, speed or number of ideas per unit of time. Obviously, ChatGPT was going to always win that. The second was market testing using a panel of potential customers. Of those, GPT-4 also won. The average purchase probability of a human-generated idea was 40%, whereas the vanilla GPT-4 was 47%, and the trained GPT-4 was 49%. Finally, looking for exceptional ideas, they looked at only the top 10%, the subset of the best ideas in the pool. Of those 40 ideas, only 5 were generated by students, and 35 were generated by GPT-4. Now, ultimately, whether this says more about GPT-4's creativity or the lack of creativity among MBA students, I will leave up to you to decide. Moving on to an interesting area of battleground around AI copyright, there's been quite a discussion in the gaming world around game developers taking advantage of generative AI tools. A post on Reddit from the beginning of the month wrote, the game I've spent three and a half years in my savings on has been rejected and retired by Steam today. The post reads, about three to four months ago, I decided to include an optional chat GPT mod in the playtest build of my game, which would allow players to replace the dialogue of NPCs with responses from the chat GPT API. This mod was entirely optional, not required for gameplay, not even meant to be a part of it, just a fun experiment. It was just a toggle in the settings and even required the playtester to use their own OpenAI API key to access it. Fast forward to about a month ago when I submitted my game for early access review. 
Steam decided that the game required an additional review by their team and asked for details around the AI. I explained exactly how this worked and that there was no AI content directly in the build, and even since then issued a new build without this mod ability just to be super safe. However, for almost one month, they said basically nothing, they refused to give estimates of how long this review would take, what progress they've made, and didn't ask for any follow-up questions or to try to have a conversation with me. This time alone was super stressful as I had no idea what to expect. Then today, I randomly received an email that my app had been retired with a generic Your Game Contains AI response. I'm in absolute shock. I've spent years working on this, sacrificing money, time with family and friends, pouring my heart and soul into the game, only to be told through a short email, sorry, we're retiring your app. Now, there is a lot that we could discuss about this. It is a brutal reminder of the problems of developing on someone else's platform, but it's also to many just insane to see this entire field summarily rejected from use in the development of games just seems pretty fundamentally unrealistic. Why Combinator president Gary Tan write, sad to hear Steam is decel. No AI in games is idiotic. Now that wasn't the interesting part, but what was interesting was Tim Sweeney's response. Tim Sweeney is the founder and CEO of Epic Games who wrote, put it on the Epic Games Store. We don't ban games for using new technologies. Now this happened about a week ago, but I just noticed it, and I think it's a really interesting and telling reflection of where a lot of conversations in AI and industry are going to be. In some places, the rejection of AI is going to be used as a business position, while equally and in opposition, the embrace of AI will too be used as a way to divide the world and market one service. It will be another bellwether of where general consumer sentiment is to see which of these positions is most rewarded in the market. Now, one more little bit of game lore just to close us out. Emmett Shear, the former CEO and co-founder of Twitch, tweeted over the weekend, Remember Black and White? Published in 2001, abandoned in 2016, it was an incredible premise. You were a god who raised an avatar creature with commands and Pavlovian feedback. It didn't really work as much as I wanted to love it, but with modern AI, dot dot dot. Now, someone responded to Emmett and said, Demis Hassabis was the lead AI programmer for Black and White. Demis Hassabis is, of course, now the co-founder of Google DeepMind. Emmett responds, wait, seriously? That's amazing lore, I had no idea. Hey, Demis, if you're willing to share, what are your thoughts on black and white in retrospect? And do you think someone should take another crack with modern AI again? Demis responds, It was the most advanced AI we could build at the time. Back in those days, the best AI was found in games, in my opinion. But I dream about what kinds of incredible games could be made with today's modern AI. Might have to scratch that itch at some point. Anyways, friends, that is going to do it for today's AI Breakdown Brief. Thanks, as always, for listening or watching, and I will be back soon with the main AI Breakdown.